This weekend, the stadium super trucks invade Crandon, Wisconsin, the mecca of off-road racing. As veterans Rob McCachran and Robbie Gordon battle for the championship, the new generation has arrived and they are banging on their doors. It's rounds nine and 10 of the stadium super trucks from the big house, next. The wonderful journey for the Speed Energy Stadium Super Truck Series continues in its inaugural year across a diverse range of tracks from the LA Coliseum to the Grand Prix of Long Beach to here, the Big House Crandon International. Hi folks, Lee Diffie along with Brian Till and Jason Wigand. And Brian, what a day we've got today. Oh, absolutely. Look at the fans. They're expecting near 40,000 people. And the funny thing about that, Crandon, Wisconsin, I think it has a population of about 2,000. This is a landmark destination as far as off-road short course racing is concerned and it's been happening for more than four decades. All right, we're getting towards the business end of this championship and after eight of the 14 rounds, Rob McCachran, the off-road legend, has just a 21-point lead over the man who founded this series, Robert Gordon, and a mainstay in the series, Justin Lofton, is 80 points further back. Time to check in with Jason. Jason? Here with uh, Robbie Gordon, a man who's certainly not a stranger to off-road racing in all facets, including racing in Mexico and Africa, short course of stadium tracks all over the world. What's it like, though, to race at Crandon? Certainly very special in off-road racing. Well, it is. Uh, Crandon is the first place that we held an SST race last year. We did a, little, did a little demo race with five trucks. Come back here and race ten trucks like we did, uh, like we're going to do this weekend. Uh, it's is, is going to be fun. It's going to be wild. This place has a lot of history and certainly a big crowd built in. Is it special to come out here and perform in front of these fans specifically? It is. There's, um, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a packed house this weekend. Uh, they're expecting 40,000 people this weekend. I, I believe they will have that. Um, we've got more Pro Twos, more Pro Fours, and then obviously the stadium trucks coming back and racing again. So they've got some good uh, class of entries here for the weekend. Should be fun. Brian, you've watched this series make its way from Phoenix to Long Beach to LA to San Diego, St. Louis. It's been a uh, it's been a fascinating opening season for the Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks. What are you expecting from Crandon? Well, I don't know what to expect because that's just what's so great about this series. You never know what to expect. But the one thing that's always consistent, though, is the racing. It is hard nosed. There's going to be contact. There's going to be plenty of excitement. So the fans at Crandon got a brief taste of what was to come in 2013 with the stadium super trucks and how about this the new face the new generation that is 15 year old scotty Steele sitting in robbie gordon's truck having a chat with robbie and this is something that robbie really encourages that next generation the youth movement in off-road racing well and scotty Steele, a champion in modified carts on dirt he's used to off-road racing but not in one of these super trucks all you have to say in short course off-road racing is one word crandon and it says it all doesn't it it says speed it says spectacular racing big action that's why they call it the big house because you've got to bring it here we've got a land rush start for this first race of the weekend round nine i'm going to show you rounds nine and ten and here is the field 16 year old sheldon creed in the 74 keep an eye out for him absolutely robbie gordon will start alongside but this land rush start very new and unique to the drivers in the stadium super truck series normally it's two by two and a lot of times a standing start so this is almost motocross style. They're side by side, and they're going to have to funnel down and play nice here in turn one. Three new drivers in the field, Jarrett Brooks, Brock Hager, and Scotty Steele. And we underline Brock Hager because he's only 13 years old. Here is the man, the captain, in the speed energy truck on the left-hand side. And we are ready to roll. On board with the 15-year-old, Scotty Steele. What do you think his nerves are like oh right my. now? This is his <laughs> first start. On down the line, Sheldon Creed, you, you talk about new guys, you included him almost as a veteran, but he only has a couple of starts. And you'll remember, we introduced you to Sheldon Creed on the streets of Toronto, Canada with that amazing event. He did it tough in the first race, but he won the second. And it's his first win in the Speed Energy Stadium Super Truck Series this year. Here we go. <laughs> Robbie Gordon gets a good start alongside PJ Jones. It is on. Now they got to funnel down. There's going to be a big jump here. And this is a very high speed racetrack around the right hand bend. Great start, Sheldon Creed. And so too the 77 of Jarrett Brooks. We ride with Scotty Steele. Whoa! Oh no! 
at least three rollovers. The good thing is he lands upright, he reaches over, shuts the engine down. I think he knows his day is done. Boy, that was huge. Well, I think the important thing is hats off to Robbie Gordon. There's the thumbs up. Hats off to Robbie Gordon and his entire staff. They build every one of these super trucks, and they're built to take a beating. You don't want to see a beating like this, but take a look. Oh, oh. That was Brock Hager, who very aggressively, the truck just stepped out. Look at that. He went over the jump sideways. The yep. truck stepped out and just went into the path of Scotty Steele. And well, that's the other thing about the stadium super trucks. They were really built to run on short courses, so a very short look at it from far away. A really short wheelbase, a narrow wheelbase, and you get it sideways and it digs in, it's going to go over. Just shows you the structural integrity of these stadium super trucks. Whew. That is not quite the way we expected to get going here at Crandon. A massive crash for one of the new drivers in the series. Robbie Gordon took the lead early and Sheldon Creed is right behind him. We're under a caution to get this situation cleaned up. When we come back, we'll go racing at Crandon. As is the case in any sport or any category within motorsport, the history of it is warmly embraced. And Crandon International is right at the center of the heart of short course off-road racing. The track was built in 1969. They've been racing here since 1970. And it's the longest running short course off-road competition in the nation. Some fabulous scenes from yesteryear. And we're creating new memories here today with the first official visit of the Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks to Crandon International, what's affectionately known as the Big House. Well, some of the memories we created, Scotty Steele is not going to want to remember no. what happened no. at the start of his very first Super Truck race. He did get out of his truck and walk away, and that is good news. You ride on board for the restart with Sheldon Creed. He's hassling Robbie Gordon. Justin Lofton in the white truck further back tried to make a good start up the inside of PJ Jones. And they come together. They have a slight rub. I think he may have cleared him. No, they're still side by side. But look at this Sheldon Creed. Robbie Gordon thinks the world of this young driver. But he's not going to just hand it to him on board with Robbie Gordon. One of the great things I love about the onboard shots in these stadium super trucks is Creed draws level with Robbie now. Now two very different lines. You'll see an area where the dirt's been pushed away. That's kind of slick. And, I, oh, and then you get out there to where there's more grip. PJ Jones just did. He got too much grip and turtle time. Boy, that happened fast. Yeah, that happened really fast. He and Justin Lofton were having a great scrap on this opening lap of the restart. And drama's here for Sheldon Creed. Like the, I don't know if he reached up and accidentally hit the kill switch, but that truck shut down. Now let's take a look at P.J. Jones. Talk about grip on the outside. Just too much of it with that narrow track. Jones goes over, bicycle to a turtle. Here's how it happened. It's a dirty sport. <laughs> P.J. just said, what just happened? How did that happen? Look at the lead that Robbie Gordon has now after that little hiccup with Sheldon Creed was a bit odd, like the way that he just left the racing surface and then was able to gather it back up again. Well, it's a three-speed transmission. You reach up and you move the gear lever, as you saw Robbie Gordon just do, and I wonder if perhaps Sheldon Creed hit the kill switch, which that red button just in front of the gear lever, did he hit it and perhaps shut it off because the truck back underway. Now you're right on board with Justin Lofton, who's second. Oh, that was Rob McCachron in the Traxxas truck that went flying past just then. Has Justin got some issues? Well, that's exactly what I was going to say, because it looked like he was off the pace. Now Rob McCachron in that blue Traxxas truck with the orange number panel signifying that he leads the championship, really giving chase to Robbie Gordon. Top two in the series, in the top two positions. This is Sheldon Creed saying, come and help, come and help. Well, now he's moving the steering wheel like there's a problem with the suspension in the front, perhaps the steering, but that's not what... Uh, Saw the slash across the throat by the crew member saying, shut it down, your day is done. But it didn't seem like that was the issue originally. Look at the smoke coming from Justin Lofton's truck. I think there's a bigger story there. We saw him lose a little speed when Rob Mack went flying past, and that smoke's been getting thicker by yep. the corner. You see it out the right side, V8 power plant in these trucks, perhaps losing a bank on the right side. But right now, Robbie Gordon 
really beginning to come under pressure by Rob McCachron. And McCachron has won at Crandon multiple times. He's won the Off-Road World Championship here three times. He's won the Brush Run four times. This kind of long track racing is what he's known for. And here at Crandon, where it's in this stadium environment, you see Gordon out there where you get on that cushion. It kind of gives you grip. Racetrack kind of tacky. We're late in the day right now. So that grip is going to be on the outside, kind of on that cushion where Gordon wants to run right now. Think about how busy the man in second is right there in the Traxxas truck. Rob McCachron, it's part of the World Championships weekend. He's racing a Pro 4, a Pro 2, and the Stadium Super Truck. He's a busy man. But there's no one better. He is Mr. Off-Road. Over 200 victories, well over 200 victories in off-road racing. Rob Mack knows how to get it done, and right now, telling you he's closing down and he looks really good in the braking zone you see him close up on gordon then he gets a good jump off that soft dirt over this first flyer right over the top look the truck looks like it's working well it's sitting down putting the power down well off of these corners one of the signature signs of short course off-road racing is a mandatory caution a yellow flag at the halfway mark of the race it gives people a little further back a second chance if you like it compresses the field and will make life a little easier for Rob Mack in his pursuit of Robbie Gordon. On board with Craig Potts and you see, I don't know if he's got that rag there because of all the dirt that gets thrown, but a lot of smoke off of the truck in front of him and that truck now pulls out of the way. Mike Jenkins. Mike Jenkins and you see a little bit of fire underneath and to me that's oil that's on fire dripping out the bottom. It looks like an engine problem. I thought it was going to be this man here yep. and that smoke is getting worse for Justin Lofton. We've seen it lap after lap. Same kind of thing. And I wonder, these tracks are a little longer than what the trucks were designed for. When I said long track racing a little bit earlier, I meant in comparatively speaking to the stadium setting that the trucks were designed to run in. And I wonder if these long duration corners are starving the engines for oil just a little bit. So there it is, the mandatory caution. We're at the halfway mark of round nine of the Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks. And Robbie Gordon leads the way. Remember the championship scenario. There's just 21 points and oh, the day's done for Justin Lofton. Well, we saw Mike Jenkins, and you said you thought it might be this man. Well, now it looks like Justin Lofton's turn to pull off to the side. This is a guy who's won two races in this series this year. He's won as many races as Robbie Gordon has, both of them, interestingly enough, on asphalt. Maybe that should not be a surprise for the man who competes in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. So, mandatory caution time for Robbie Gordon. Catch your breath, reset, get ready to go again for another six laps here at the Big House, Crandon International. You know what scares me? Did you see the young lady with the very large hammer? <laughs> <laughs> That's just in case any of the guys yeah, get out of yeah, line. Well, absolutely. Speaking of getting out of line, it's about to get back to green, and these guys are going to get out of line when they go for it. Think about this. In third place is the 77 of 16-year-old Jarrett Brooks, one of the new drivers in the series, and he's looking up ahead at 20-time champion Rob McCachron. He's pressuring Cat McCachron on the inside and Robbie Gordon. He's not just pressuring him. He was side-by-side -side with him for a moment right there. And for Rob McCachron, he's got to think championship. 25 points on the line to win, 22 per second. Right now, Robbie Gordon would close down on in the championship a little bit. Rob Mack wants to move things around and uh, the youngster in the 77. Jarrett Brooks, well, he wants to show him what he's made of. Only has two starts so far this season, but shows why Robbie Gordon likes these youngsters. Look at him. He's not impressed at all by the guys in front of him. You may have noticed, oh, look at this. Here comes Rob Mack, draws almost alongside Robbie Gordon. You may have noticed the other orange truck in the background. That was Brock Hager, and he just had a very simple spin on corner exit. But this is where the race is, not only for this event, it's for the championship as Robbie Gordon gets up on two wheels. I think they may have touched coming through that corner. We talked about Rob Mack's truck sitting down and working well, and that's exactly what he did. Got a great drive off the corner, but now he's pinned down to the inside on that slick dirt. Robbie Gordon, even though it's the long way around, is going to get a good run using the cushion, and he does. Whoa, 
That was spectacular. We've got a new race leader for the first time but for in round long? nine. And Robbie Gordon does not want to relinquish it. He's fighting Rob McCachran in the championship. He's down by 21 points. He wants to get it. But Rob Mack using that stickier, that tackier dirt on the outside. But this is where Rob Mack has been fast. Gets the power down, gets over this jump really well. And now Robbie Gordon has to worry a little bit about Jared Brooks right behind him. Trying to get traction to the ground using these 600 horsepower trucks that Robbie Gordon likes to say, we're like the V8 supercars of the off-road world. <laughs> and just as exciting, if not more so. So Mac now out there on that cushion. Robbie Gordon liking to run inside a little bit more, but telling you what, right now that 21, Rob Mack and his Traxxas truck putting on a show. Gordon down to the inside. It just doesn't work for him down there. I asked Rob McCachran recently, why so much this year? Why do Pro 2 and Pro 4 and as well as the Stadium Super Truck Series? He said, if there is a truck that I can drive and I feel I'm competitive, why not? I'm here anyway. Well, and a lot of times the guys will tell you these Stadium Super Trucks are more difficult to drive than the Pro Lights or even the 4x4s because they are short, they are narrow, and you got to really stay on top of them. You don't want to get up on the bicycle on two wheels, and you got to be careful get on that cushion, you get too much grip, you will go over just like PJ Jones did a little bit earlier. The attrition rate has been quite high in this one, as Brian just mentioned. Oh, bicycling for Rob Mack as well. We lost PJ Jones with a rollover. Sheldon Creed had some kind of a mechanical issue. Justin Lofton, and then in a spectacular crash on the opening lap on the front straight, Teenager Scotty Steele was just flung around. He pirouetted and barrel rolled. He's okay. The truck looked a little bit ordinary and he didn't even get to make one lap in this race, but he'll be back for the next one, round 10 of the series. At the moment, with one lap to go, Rob Mack looks to have this in hand. Well, he does, and he's using this racetrack just the way he should. He's staying off that slick dirt, the dirt that's been packed down on that cushion, and look at the drive he gets off of that corner over the little whoop right here, and the truck really looks good. It looks to me like Robbie Gordon just doesn't have the grip when he tries to get the power down, and Mack, pulling away. Rob Mack showing why he is a multi-time champion. You start to see the track where it's compacting and it's getting a blue groove and they'll push out towards that cushion. But at the moment, speaking of a cushion, Rob McCachran has a comfortable one over Robbie Gordon. Final lap of this two race weekend. 25 points to win, 22 for second place. But if my memory serves me correctly, Robbie Gordon led a fair number of laps. If he led the most laps, we'll have to go back and look at it. He'll get three points for doing so. So if he finishes second, he'll tie with Rob Mack. Rob Mack takes the checkered flag. Great win. That's his fourth of the 2013 season. And finishing in the top three, the teenager Jarrett Brooks. But it's time to celebrate. There's nothing this man knows better or loves doing than winning. Well, <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit more than bicycling. <laughs> I don't think Rob Mack meant to do that. Uh, I was going to say, is he really that good? Or was that an accident? <laughs> Here comes Justin Lofton making his way down to talk to the guys that he's been fighting with all championship long. Our race winner, Rob McCachran. The championship leader extends his championship lead over Robbie Gordon. That was a good fight. Back at Crandon International on World Championship Weekend for one of two races for the Speed Energy Stadium Super Truck Series. And there is one very youthful face in amongst a couple of very experienced campaigners. Time to have a look at the results. We know who finished in the top three. Who caught your eye there, Brian? Rob Mack. Second half of that race, he was spectacular. Well, as we mentioned before, the man has won 20 national championships. It's time to hear from him. He's standing by with Jason Wygant. Well, Rob Mack, you didn't even get much time in the truck in practice. You seem to have figured it out pretty quick. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, these trucks, they're really fun to drive. You know, Robbie and everybody at SST work so hard on these trucks. We've had a great series this year so far, you know, looking for bigger and better things in the future with SST. And, uh, you know, I can't thank Mike Jenkins and all the Traxxas team for working so hard on these trucks for me, uh, giving us something out there to win. You know, uh, we've been leading the points championship for most of the year. Robbie stole it from me there for one round. And, uh, you know, it's me and him going for it. And uh, it's been good. You know, the truck was great. It's a good battle out there. Some pretty awesome stuff following him and uh, coming through the big sweeper here. He's bicycling, had the left front tire about two feet in the air, and I'm side by side with him. But that gave us the momentum to get in front of him. And uh, from then on, we just need to not make any mistakes. And uh, I saved my mistakes after the race. So 
I, I've uh, I've ended up in the water before the race and came back and won. Um, you know, I've spun early and won, and now I've won and then crashed after. So uh, we didn't mean to do that on purpose, but we'll take it. We'll claim it. How big is the adjustment from some of the other classes you're doing out here and racing the SST? Well, it is. There, there's there's quite a bit of adjustment. You know, I'm here. You know, we're here at Crandon. You know, this is the big house. This is the the home of short course racing. You know, great speeds and uh, you know, long story short, um, it is tough. You know, driving Pro Two, Pro Four, jumping in the SST truck. They're all three very very different trucks. And uh, the beginning there it took me a little bit of time to adapt, but once we settled in, uh, we took it to the front. Thank you. Easy to see how pumped Rob Mack is as we go to the championship points. Brian, we mentioned a little earlier, extending his lead, but it's not the case. He can't get away. Robbie Gordon led the most laps, so he gets three bonus points in addition to the 22 for finishing second. That's 25. It's exactly what Rob Mack won. It's right where they came in. Unbelievable battle between you and McCachron for the win there. Yeah, it was good. Um, I got it up on the bicycle and um, I guess I call it the fast sweeper uh, over here by the barn, and um, he got down underneath me. And once he got underneath me, I couldn't do anything about it. I mean, he just uh, we just kind of stayed at the same speed the whole time. So it was good, though. He um, had a good run, and um, I don't know what's going on with Guppy's motors. We got to figure that out because uh, we lost a few motors, which is really unfortunate for us. But um, all in all, it was good. I hope uh, little Scotty Steele's okay. That looked like a like a big one they said. So um, I'm glad to see he got out of it on his own power you got a lot of young kids in this series, and now they're starting to bang on your doors a little bit going for the win. Well, you know, we got we got uh, Sheldon Creed, who's, uh, who's won a moto now. Uh, we got Jared Brooks here now on the podium. So, you know, it's uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of good young youth in off-road racing, and I think this is uh, the right place to get them started. You know, uh, we got we got little uh, Scotty over there that, what is he, 15 years old? And then, um, you know, we had another one that was, uh, was 13 out there this, uh, today, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, let's switch over to one of the young kids. Just turned 16. Jarrett Brooks got in the top three and battled with two of the legends. Had to be a thrill for you. Dude, this, this, uh, these trucks are so fun to drive, you know. Coming from my Pro Light and then hopping into here, it's a big difference because, you know, my Pro Light's way slower and just, it's insane, you know, how Robbie got these trucks so hard to drive. So it takes a lot of skill to drive these things. Uh, was the driver's license the key? I know you can actually legally drive on the road now, and lo and behold, you're putting in better results. Yeah, the driver's license I just got like a month ago, so, but on the streets, you know, just getting used to it. I don't think I'm as uh, good of a driver on the street than I am on dirt. Huge boost for Jared Brooks, and he'll be back again because one down, one to go. More from Crandon when we return. It's a new day, it's another event at Crandon International and Robbie Gordon decided to make a switch in direction. Jason Wygant tells us more. Well thanks guys, we are literally going to turn things around 180 degrees from where we were racing on Friday. The only thing about the race format that stays the same is it will still be a 12 lap event, but beyond that, completely different. At the six lap mark, we're gonna bring out the competition caution and turn the trucks around and run the track in the opposite direction. That also means we're gonna skip that jump the drivers think that opening the course up like that will lead to some more passing down the stretch. So whoever can figure out the different course configuration is going to have a big advantage as the checkered flag looms. So Brian, as a driver, what do you make of that? Well, I think the other good thing about skipping the jump is it may help the oil stay in the engine where it needs to be, and that jump may be part of the reason we saw some engines lost yesterday. Same drivers as we saw in round nine, and there are plenty looking for a second chance, like Justin Lofton, Scotty Steele and PJ Jones, who ended up on his roof, and Sheldon Creed did not get the run 
that he was hoping for as well after making a very good start in yesterday's opening event of the weekend where he challenged Robbie Gordon uh, until having to pull to the side of the circuit and retire. It's going to be another land rush start. This is exciting stuff. I like this element to the series. Craig Potts. All the drivers getting ready. I'll tell you what else is different today. There's a pretty steady wind and the sun is shining. The racetrack is going to be completely different. There's PJ Jones. It's one of the good things that I love about the Speed Energy Stadium Super Truck Series. The drivers, the depth of talent, and some like somebody like PJ Jones, you think about what he's driven in his career from Indy cars to NASCAR, and here he is, just loves the off-road. Justin Lofton drumming? <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the pump-up process. Here's Scotty Steele, who got flung around like a rag yesterday, but he's okay, and he's ready to fight another day. And he's looking for a better start. Look at those young eyes. 13-year-old Brock Hager. He hung in there, he hung tough yesterday, learned a lot as well. And then Jarrett Brooks, who stood on the podium alongside Rob McCachran and Robbie Gordon. He'll remember that for a uh, long time. He'll remember it for a very long time. And then there he is, the captain, Robbie Gordon, getting ready for this land rush start. He's like, all right, I'm ready for you, Rob McCachran, and I'm ready <laughs> for you kids as well. Well, and what does Rob Mack have today? Remember in the run yesterday, he took the victory 25 points, but Robbie Gordon won't let him go anywhere. He just keeps hanging tough. Two legendary drivers at the top of the championship. Green flag waves at Crandon for a new direction. We're going the opposite way. And you can already see how dry this racetrack is. Whoa! Oh, Side by side in the air, you don't want to see that. That was part of the problem yesterday. Justin Lofton in that white number six. And Mike Jenkins in the black, red, and white Traxxas truck. And Robbie Gordon did not get the start that he wanted. He is well back in the serial right now. It's the four of Brock Hager. It's the other orange truck in the race. Meanwhile, Sheldon Creed is where he wants to be. Robbie Gordon splits the pack. He comes right through, and Jenkins spins. Oh, the big contact back in the back, and Robbie Gordon was the meat in that sandwich. We talk about this racetrack being completely different. Take a look. Oh, oh, it's Rob McCachran. It's the two Traxxas trucks that he gets sandwiched between. It's a Traxxas sandwich. That's what it looks like from on board with Jenkins. Wow, Robbie saw the gap and just went for it. Yeah, and the door was closing on board with Gordon. That's gonna, this is gonna have an impact, pardon the pun, in the championship. As he is now well back, but out in front, 77, Jarrett Brooks. Look at that, look at that. I love it when these trucks bicycle. Just that ri raw grip on the outside and the power. That's what makes Stadium Super Trucks so spectacular. Let's go on board with the youngster. Watch him work. That silver lever you see to the left, that is the gear shift. And then the other lever is a rear brake, a turning brake that they use to help get these trucks turned in the tight stuff. Here's the start on board with Robbie Gordon. Rob Mack outside. We talk about the racetrack being so different. Look at the rocks. Whoa. Oh, that's brutal. Yesterday or last night, it was mud. It is, oh. He is just getting hosed with rocks and dirt coming through the screens. This is another view from Rob Mack. Oh, you don't want to be in the back. You want to be out in front, A, because you want to be leading, but now you see why you want to be leading with the racetrack being different. This is what it looks like when you're out in front. That's what you want to see, Jarrett Brooks. He's got no dirt, no rocks, and a clean racetrack in front of him. Still running the same direction we ran yesterday. So Brooks, now through that hairpin and over the whoop. And he lands it perfectly. Got to be impressed with this young man. He's looking for grip right now. You can see that area where it's polished. Looks outside, runs the cushion. He's just in discovery mode right now. And he is 16 years old. That means there's no fear either. He's being chased down by a fellow teenager. That is Sheldon Creed, who has won in this series this year. And he wants a second shot at it today because it didn't quite go to plan yesterday. Now, Sheldon Creed has the advantage of watching Brooks in front of him. He can see where he runs. He can try out something a little bit different and see how that works out. But you got to be careful. You don't want to risk too much. Remember, at the halfway mark, we're going to switch this thing around and run the opposite direction. So you only have a few laps to learn. It's 
a good margin and it's an achievable margin between these top two. Look at Sheldon Creed now. He's gained ground on our race leader, Jared Brooks. Good under the brakes in there. You see him really close the gap and over that first whoop gets a real good jump. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. This is Brock Hager. Looks like PJ Jones from yesterday. I think it's the exact same corner. Gets up on the bicycle and then... Oh, Oof, that was a big hit. Oh, the only, only difference, PJ Jones was turtled yesterday. Hager gets back underway. What were you doing when you were 13? I went upside <laughs> down in a stadium super hey. truck, that's for sure. This is a super fight at the front in the Speed Energy oh. Stadium super trucks. Here comes Sheldon Creed. Creed is there. He used these few laps to figure out this racetrack. He wants to get by because he would like to have the point. When they switch this around, he looks to the inside, a little slicker, shorter route down there, but maybe not quite as much grip on the drive off the corner. Can't get it done. I remember speaking with Townsend Bell from uh, NBCSN, our commentary colleague and good friend, when he raced against Sheldon Creed on the streets of Toronto, Brian, and he said this kid's race craft is amazing for a 16-year-old. He's smart. He sits, watches, thinks, gets it figured out, and then attacks. Another youngster, Scotty Steele. Robbie Gordon putting the pressure on there. On the back bumper of Scotty Steele. Steele with that wicked flip at the start yesterday. Yeah, that was savage. That was very, very nasty. It had Robbie Gordon concerned. He said, I hope that Scotty was all right. He is. He's back to race another day. Puff of smoke there. I hope we're not going to see some more engine dramas. Well, I don't know if it's out the engine or the tires might be smoking on this hard pack that's here. See how he reaches up, grabs the turning brake, and then goes to the gear shift to go down a gear. Comes off the corner. He'll shift up. Robbie tried the inside move there, couldn't quite get it done. Three speed gearboxes, and now I'll reach over, grab that turning brake to help the car turn a little bit. But I, I, I was thinking it might have been tire smoke, but to me, looks like it's out of the engine compartment. Truck's still running strong. Question is for how long? Really? And just look at the different lines that Robbie Gordon's working. Trying to work over this teenager. Up and over that kicker jump and then down. Maximum speed, here we go. Robbie gets that pass executed. Does exactly what he needs to do. Gets to the inside, gets a good run coming over the jump. But man, back up front. Sheldon Creed not letting Jarrett Brooks get away. I think he's faster in some of the slower sections of the racetrack, but it looks to me like Jarrett Brooks just a little bit quicker in the high speed sections. Now he tries to take the inside line. There's not a lot of grip down there for Sheldon Creed, and you can see it with Jarrett Brooks getting the drive off the corner, once again using the cushion. But this is where Sheldon Creed in that black 74 is quicker. He was right there the last time, still can't get it done. And you may say, where do these kids come from? How do they end up in stadium super trucks? There's a good pathway, just as there is with asphalt racing. Creed on the inside. It's the modified carts that run in short course off-road racing. And Sheldon Creed is a former champion in that category and has really started to make his na a name for himself in the Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks. Got he goes it. the inside line, Brian, bicycling it. And he's in front for now, but the run off the corner, that'll be the question. Can Jarrett Brooks get it back? And no, he's taken the position and now he goes back to the preferred line. So he's gonna hold that. Well, I say he is. He's gonna hold it, tell the flag, yeah, he does. And the yellow and red signifying the competition caution, the mandatory caution at the halfway mark of this second and final race of the weekend at Crandon International here in Wisconsin. Creed is our leader at the halfway mark. Boy, that was a good chase. That was a super chase. It and was Sheldon flicks it round because... Yeah, we're gonna go the opposite direction. <laughs> and he went to school there on Jarrett Brooks and really figured out what he needed to do. These guys know each other, these teenagers. You saw Sheldon there just give the thumbs up. Yep, that was fun. Guess what, we're only halfway done. Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks continue from the big house. Crandon International, Lee Diffie, Brian Till, Jason Wigand with you as we get ready to finish off the 10th round of the inaugural season of SST. And the man who created it, you just saw there, Robbie Gordon. What a great concept. What an interesting year it's been. Oh, it's been a fantastic year. They've run on pavement, they've run in stadiums, now they're running outdoors. But all the lessons these guys just learned about this racetrack and how different it is today than it was from last night, guess what? It means absolutely nothing. 
because in typical Robbie Gordon fashion, we've switched it up. All trucks the same, all manufactured in Charlotte, North Carolina with Robbie Gordon Motorsports and SST. His staff have done a really good job. When you speak to the drivers in the series, they love these trucks. They love them. And the other thing about them is they will take a beating. We saw that with Brock Hager's crash yesterday or his rollover with Scotty Steele's crash yesterday. And that's the thing about them. They are built tough and they are built safe. And Robbie Gordon can uh, congratulate his guys for doing a great job on building them. It's about time to go back to green, though. Justin Lofton, P.J. Jones, their third and fourth. P.J. in the black Man, truck, pulls out a line. He was ready to go. Lofton was looking racy. Jared Brooks putting the pressure on our race leader. Robbie Gordon goes way wide. On board with McEachern. He's getting it into it with P.J. Jones. Oh, he's trying to get past P.J. Jones. And was it Lofton that was out there on the outside? It is. Now Lofton on the inside for the next corner. He's trying to get a jump. But out in front, Sheldon Creed, Jared Brooks side Ooh. by side. I think Justin. Justin Lofton got sideways and nudged into the wall. Meanwhile, Brooks and Creed at the front. Jarrett Brooks did the switch back on him, the over and under, and it's paid off. Uh, it paid off for right now, but you got to see what happens in the next corner. Another right-hand sweeper. Creed looks back to the inside. Can he return the favor? He's down on the hard pack. Reverse direction at the big house, and it is playing out beautifully. And these guys have held nothing back. They don't know about this racetrack in the opposite direction, but they are on it from the drop of the green. You've got to be. Man, Jarrett Brooks really getting things figured out, but Creed not letting him get away. In the back, PJ Jones holds down third, so it was Lofton who got a little squirrely. I think he nudged into that blue wall on the inside. Rob McEachern is in there, our winner from the ninth round. Robbie Gordon, they're all going door to door. Look at how different the racetrack is, even from the beginning of this race. Look at the dust. That's telling you that it's dry, and that means grip is at a minimum. You've got to go find as much moisture dirt as you can because that's where it's going to get tacky. You see him outside right now. I'm not sure he drove out there on his own. P.J. Jones trying to hold off Justin Lofton right behind him. Yeah, Robbie Gordon got a line through there and there is Justin Lofton up ahead. He's working over P.J. Jones. The orange truck is Robbie Gordon. We ride on board with Rob McCachron. Boy, this is savage fighting with some experienced campaigners here. Oh, and Three really hard charges right in front. Lofton into the back of P.J. Jones. Brings Rob Mack right into the fight. Jones with a little smoke out from underneath his Whoa. truck. P.J. Jones, he ended up on his lid yesterday and then spins at a very fast section of this track. See the flagman moving out of the way. P.J. always spectacular. He never holds anything back. Hard to believe he hasn't won a main event this year. He's always going for it. I saw that little bit of smoke. That had nothing to do with his crash there at the finish line. Looks like he just got a little sideways coming over the jump before it. The car just kind of reacted and hooked back to the other side. Meanwhile, Jared Brooks, he looks smooth. He looks comfortable in that truck. Look at him work, nice and smooth. He's relaxed and that's what you've got to be. And that's the mark of a driver who's comfortable in his machine. And as you heard him say with Jason in his uh, post-race one interview, he's only just gained his driver's license. Not competitive license for this, but road-going license. He enjoys the dirt a whole lot more than the asphalt. And it's easy to see why. The two 16-year-olds running one and two over a very experienced field. Boy, that was rough a little earlier on. Those boys were pushing on each other. It was. It's going to be interesting, though, now that the track is being run backwards, breaking zones. That's where Sheldon Creed was really quick earlier. He was able to close down in the breaking zones and get off the corners well as they go past P.J. Jones. And All right, stadium super trucks are tough, but you can only do so much with them, so exactly. P.J. off the pace. But Creed was really fast in those breaking zones. If you're into off-road short course racing, Crandon, Wisconsin is a destination event. Here's Jason with our winner. Well, Jared Brooks, right on your truck, it says live in the dream. You're 16 years old. You beat the best in the world at Crandon. Is that a dream come true? Dude, this is such a dream. I've always wanted to race here before, and uh, I got the opportunity to drive a super truck on Friday night. I'm just so pumped right now, you know? We were leading that whole, we pretty much led that whole race, you know? Sheldon Creed gave me a great battle. I'm just so pumped. I just. I'm so pumped right now. You said from being able to battle with McCachron and Gordon on day one that you learned something. What did you learn and how did you put it to use? I learned how to run way harder and you know how to run the cushion better, how to stay in that fluff with the right rear and just 
stay on it, you know, don't, uh, don't look back and just keep around the cushion. An excited, talented young man, and he should be pumped because that was an outstanding effort from Jarrett Brooks over Sheldon Creed, who pushed him all the way to the checkered flag. It's been an interesting weekend at Crandon. Let's hear from the man who founded this series, Robbie Gordon and Sheldon Creed, standing by with Jason. Well, we started the weekend talking about the veterans, Robbie Gordon, Rob McCachran going for the championship, but you got two kids who are learning quick, Robbie. Yeah, they're learning too quick. Um, you know, both of them beat us this weekend, and um, it's pretty impressive. Happy for Jared Brooks, and obviously Sheldon's won a race over in Toronto not too far back. So, um, you know, all in all, it's good. It's good to see uh, youth in the sport and uh, young guys coming up. You know, both these guys, uh, I believe both came out of trophy card as well, and they have just a ton of experience. So I'm, I'm really happy that, that Jared won, and obviously that Sheldon had a good run too. Sheldon, just talk about having a legend like Robbie Gordon and being able to learn from him. Yeah, he's, uh, he's taught me a lot, actually, since I've been in these trucks. And you know, to, to beat him is pretty cool, too. Did you ever think it would come down to you and your best buddy, Jarrett Brooks, battling for the win like that? No, I honestly don't know. He did really good uh, Friday. So coming into this, it was really fun. And got the lead towards the end, I think lap six or something. And then uh, tried to hold on to it. But his truck pulled so hard off the turns. And it was hard to keep up. So I, I think we kept it like two, three car lengths. And, Tried to go for him on the last lap, but uh, got a little push. We had a couple of fans say it's the first time they've ever seen this track run in reverse. What was that like? Well, you know, I, I, it was kind of a joke yet last night. It's like, um, you know, we run all these NASCAR races, and by the time you run them, you run left hand, you're dizzy. It's like, let's run right hand for once. So, um, you know, I talked to the track. They said, let's, uh, let's do it. If you guys want to mix it up and go backwards, um, you know, let us get some uh, tires. As you see, they're moving the tires over here in front of the, uh, the K-Rail Armco stuff. And if you guys want to do it, go for it. And it looked like it worked out really well. One thing that was nice is it put the drivers to a quick challenge, not really knowing where the groove was on the racetrack. You know, we all anticipate inside, outside, inside. But this place here at Crandon, it blew grooves so bad that you're riding a completely different cushion. It wasn't all smooth sailing. <laughs> this happened just after the end of the event. Something. And it's between Justin Lofton and... PJ Jones. Sometimes drivers have dif disagreements. Yes, PJ is not too pleased with Justin Lofton, as you can see. PJ in the uh, blue driving suit, black helmet, and uh, then here comes one of Lofton's crew guys, and that's that. So this is obviously with something that went on in that yeah, second race. Obviously, they finished ninth and tenth, but you're not going to do a lot of damage to a guy who's sitting there with his helmet on when you can't get to him. But uh, yeah, one of the crew guys. PJ's a big guy. Crew guy was bigger. So four races left in SST 2013, and we've finally seen that points needle move a little bit. Well, it only moved a little bit. Two points. Robbie Gordon has closed down on Rob McCachran, but there are four races left. That's 100 points if you were to win all four rounds. That means, well, you can go back to Justin Lofton. He's technically still in it. Yeah, tough weekend, though, for Justin, wasn't it? Because he started... Uh, a little closer to the front action than where he ends up some 96 back. That wraps up SST in the big house at Crandon International. Good weekend? A great weekend. And as we look further down the road, the racetracks are going to change even more. We'll have sand, we'll have dirt, we'll also have some asphalt again. Working towards the end of the Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks for 2013. They did an exhibition, a demonstration here at Crandon International last year. This time, it was for real. And there's some tremendous storylines coming out. The first event of the weekend had two of the sports legends going door to door, fighting over the win. The second race, two future superstars in off-road short course racing going at it. 16 years old, and they fought it all the way to the checkered flag. We had a little bit of everything in Wisconsin this weekend. We hope you've enjoyed the coverage of SST. There's plenty more to come in 2013.